The new cases and the advice of these experts have led us to give new guidance to North Carolina residents and to declare a state of emergency for our state. Governor Roy Cooper, as you heard, declared a state of emergency amid the coronavirus outbreak. There are five new cases of the virus in Wake County. That brings our state's total to seven. Those new cases are connected to people who went to a conference up in Boston. They are all quarantined in their homes. Now, these new cases are not linked to the first two cases. Of course, one of those cases is a Chatham County resident who recently traveled to Italy. The other patient traveled to a retirement home in Washington State. So what is a state of emergency? What does this mean? Well, it means state funds will be moved faster to help local agencies who are working to stop the spread of coronavirus. And it also puts into effect the state's price gouging law. State officials are also suggesting anyone older than 65 to avoid large gatherings. Good afternoon and welcome, of course, to your four to five. I'm Eric Chilton with Maddie Gardner. Yes, this is an interactive news show built to connect you with your community. We are live streaming right now on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, so make sure you're commenting. Yep, and use that hashtag 425. That's word four, number two, word five, so we can see what you're saying out there. All right, uh, hearing the term state of emergency, obviously that can be a little bit frightening mm -hmm. for people, but we want to put this into perspective for you because the coronavirus impact versus the flu. So state health department's most recent report shows 127 total flu deaths this season alone, and 11 of those deaths were in a single week. The, uh, the flu season started in September, by the way, of last year. It can run through May of this year, just depending on how the cases go. But compare this to the seven total coronavirus cases and zero deaths in our state. Coronavirus numbers, when you put this into perspective, they're a drop in the bucket compared to what the flu does. All right, so uh, one of those cases closed down a school in Raleigh. Two television stations in the Raleigh market are reporting that Trinity Academy closed after a parent tested positive for coronavirus. The head of the school said in an email that the risk to students is minimal, but out of an abundance of caution, they will close today. The school will use today to talk to health care professionals and come up with a plan. They'll also say that they sanitize the entire school. Yes, and meanwhile, nationally, school districts are closing because of this outbreak. Atlanta closed down one school district today. Schools in Washington State closed down for several days. And New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo says one school district is likely to shut down for weeks. The governor also said if any students test positive in a state, that a school should probably shut down for at least 24 hours. Now, President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence met with agencies today discussing coronavirus response efforts. The health insurance companies have agreed to waive co-payments for a coronavirus testing as well as surprise billing for treatment. President Trump's response plan could include payroll tax relief. It also helps hourly employees who will lose a paycheck if they are out sick. As the number of coronavirus cases rise, health officials say proper hygiene is really the best way to reduce your risk of getting it. Tahitian Moist learned how some local businesses are keeping that virus from spreading. We certainly have noticed an uptick in calls in the last week or two. Each week, EnviroMaster heads to local businesses. We work with restaurants, daycares, gyms. Uh, office environments, uh, really any business with a bathroom as a potential client. Doing what they can to stop the spread of germs. As of lately, they've been getting a lot of calls about the coronavirus. Uh, what they can do to prevent getting sick or minimize the risk of getting sick. Here at Bricks Pizza in Greensboro, the store's general manager says keeping things clean is a top priority. Every time a customer gets up from our tables, we wipe them down with a sanitizer. Employees also wipe down menus and wash their hands often. But when it comes to the bathroom, Bricks turns to EnviroMaster to disinfect. It's pretty commonly known that the restroom is one of the germiest places uh, in a business. EnviroMaster uses this sci-fi looking tool called the virus vaporizer to apply an EPA approved germicide to surfaces in the restroom. When the, uh, the toilet flushes, uh, it's kind of like it's sneezing and those little particles can go up in the air and travel up to 10 feet and stay in the air uh, up to 20 minutes. The spray puts a positive charge on the disinfectant. Dave Goodwin says most surfaces have a negative charge, so the spray acts like a magnet. When we do this, we're getting a much more effective coverage than, say, just using a spray bottle or, or a wipe. With each spray, germs are zapped away. 
which should give customers peace of mind. And EnviroMaster says most businesses that they work with use their services once a week just as an extra layer of protection. So get this, Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune, they're starting to tape without studio audiences. You don't usually see that. This, of course, is a precaution to the coronavirus outbreak. Game shows uh, are adjusting their plans uh, all across the board in a lot of different cases here. CBS announced that The Amazing Race will suspend production because of this. And now let's take a look at something that's trending on Twitter. It's a hashtag and it's hashtag wash your hands like the trend is people are sharing different ways to wash your hands. Yes, and uh, so Jalen's checking out some of the comments here, the top comments. I, I assume some people are probably having fun with this, others taking it more seriously. Yeah, I think this is more of a topic to bring some humor to a serious situation. It's such a heavy topic that, you know, humor brings light to all. So our first comment comes from Debbie. She says, wash your hands like you just ate a whole bag of Cheetos and are about to crochet with pure white yarn. <laughs> then Catherine, she says, wash your hands like you've been picking crabs with Old Bay seasoning and need to change your contact. Oh, wow. <laughs> then we, <laughs> That's a good we got one. a gift from Caleb. He says, wash your hands unless you're a T-Rex because you can't reach. <laughs> and then we have Rob. He says, wash your hands just like a kindergartner's wet, uh, tied like a kindergartner's wet shoelace. That's pretty tight. <laughs> and then we got Jerrica. She says, your newborn pooped on your hand and you suddenly got a nose itch. <laughs> Oh no, oh no. Oh, <laughs> and then no. Bonnie says, wash your hands like you're washing Jason Momoa. <laughs> <laughs> These people are out of control. <laughs> you better stop, Jill. I'm not sure. I where think we've had enough. <laughs> I think we I got think enough. We've had enough. We got the idea. I think people are, are using humor to cope with this because it can be an anxiety producing Absolutely. situation. But we don't want you to think we're making light of it because it is a serious topic and there are people who are very sick because of and, it. But I think, I think too, that we at some point we all have to go, you know what, this, it's, because you're right, it keeps your attention here if you let right. it. And at some point, humor can kind of vent that teapot just a little bit. You definitely want to wash your hands if you mess with the old bay. Though. That's for sure. That's yeah. true. All right, something else to know that we want to point out. Most coronavirus cases, they are mild. It's really a bigger issue for older adults with pre-existing health problems. Anyone with mild symptoms is most likely to recover in two weeks. This was a question that we got yesterday on our live stream. Someone was asking, do people recover from this? And yes, about half of the cases yeah. in China, those patients have recovered. I think people with pre-existing conditions, like we always say, and it's either like extremely young, like babies or the elderly, if they have issues or the ones mm -hmm. that are more uh, at risk. But there I saw an article just today of an elderly couple that went on a cruise. and They both got it and they came through fine. So That's it's just hit or miss. Here. Yeah, and now Governor Cooper and state officials are saying if you're older than 65, maybe stay away from those large gatherings just because it's more likely that there are germs there, right? Very more true. people. Very true. All right, uh, let's talk about a forecast. That's an easier thing to figure out, isn't it? Uh, we'll look and see what's going on with the temperatures and wind gusts. Uh, really, the wind gust to me, that's been the bigger issue today. Look at Statesville, a 40 mile an hour wind gust. 30 in Greensboro, 22 Ashboro. It bumps up a little bit to around 31 to 30 in Roxboro. Uh, bottom line is that we're windy for today. That's for sure. Tonight, we'll see uh, mainly dry conditions. Might see a little patchy fog. Look for 52 for the overnight low, which means that'll be your morning temperature. Not all that bad. We get warm tomorrow, though. 69 degrees with part cloudy skies that'll be for tomorrow mainly dry and warm winds will be out of the southwest 5 to 10 and uh, we'll look for that sun up right around 7 36 we'll have the seven day forecast for you coming up in a minute Voters in six states go to the polls today. Former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders fighting for the big win in Michigan. That state has 125 delegates to offer candidates. Sanders won the Michigan primary in 2016 against Hillary Clinton. Now, Washington, Missouri, Mississippi, and Idaho, among other states, are holding primaries. There are 352 total delegates up for grabs in all states. North Dakota, by the way, has a caucus today. Stocks revived after Wall Street sees its worst day since 2008. The New York Stock Exchange shut down for 15 minutes yesterday. Investors were concerned with coronavirus and oil price battle among producers. The Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P all rose over 2% today. Overseas markets were also higher, and the price of oil went up 8%.
And it's opening day for KFC in Eden. Big round of applause, please. The restaurant rebuilt after an explosion happened in July. The ribbon cutting ceremony was held this morning for the grand opening. By the way, a gas leak caused that explosion. No one was hurt, by the way. If you are looking for a job, make sure you check out the new KFC on North Van Buren Road because they're hiring. And it's Harriet Tubman Day. This celebrates Harriet Ross Tubman, who was born into slavery in 1820, escaped in 1849. She became conductor of the Underground Railroad, of course, made 19 trips as the conductor. And get this, she was a spy, a nurse, soldier, scout, and cook during the Civil War. And you might remember this lady, Diane Faison. This Burlington woman dresses as Harriet Tubman. To retell her story, you can find Faison performing at schools all over the triad. Back down. Hi, Mike Check, one, two, three. Wake Forest and Pitt take the court in just a few minutes. It's survive and advance. Now, just a few days ago, we had the Women's ACC tournament in this building. Cool. Welcome back to the four to five. It's time for our question of the day. So get out your phone, go to the WFMY News 2 app or WFMY.com slash vote now. The men's ACC tournament tips off today. We want to know which North Carolina team are you rooting for? Would that be State, Duke, Carolina, or Wake Forest? And if you uh, aren't using your phone, remember you can always go to WFMY.com slash vote now and I just get that in. I want you to know there's only one correct answer in this poll today. <laughs> for some of no us. No pressure. Yes. In the meantime, WFMY News 2 Amanda Ferguson is live for us at the tournament at the Greensboro Coliseum Complex. Amanda, it's almost tip off for two teams. Yep, at 4.30. For Wake Forest and Pitt to take the court. It's survive in advance now. Every game matters and to continue on in this tournament. Now, just a few days ago, it was the women's ACC tournament and I was here covering those games. Caught up with a bunch of fans who obviously have been coming here for years, coming to the same tournament. They have some spots in Greensboro that they loved and they shared their thoughts with me. Now, whether you're a local or you're here in just in town just for these games, I found out what those spots are. Take a listen. Scrambled, yeah. Delicious. Stamies, barbecue restaurant. <laughs> we went to Bravo last night. It was pretty darn good. We might have to do a repeat. I like noodles and company. Red crabs. It's a seafood restaurant on Westgate. Some good places in there. Now, if you're from here, you probably know some of those. And if you're not, you might have a dinner place to go to tonight if your team's not playing just over there inside the Coliseum. Now, it's 15 minutes till 
tip off pretty much. Now I was here for a couple of hours, caught up with a bunch of fans before they came in the building. You'll have to hear what they say. I'll be talking about that coming up in about 30 minutes. Some fans were waiting hours. Some they're not their teams are not even playing today, but they just love the ACC that much. You'll hear from them coming up in about 30 minutes. All right, thank you, man. It's always nice to watch other teams play, even if you're waiting for your team, because there's no pressure on those. You know, you can just relax and enjoy those games. I'm honestly not feeling a lot of pressure this year at all. No, me either. Yeah. Let's take a look at these poll results. So we ask you, what team are you rooting for in the ACC tournament? 44% of you are saying UNC. 32% of you are saying Duke. NC State with 18. Wake Forest, only 5% of the vote right now. Those soon, team and Deacons need to vote. As soon as we say that, somebody will jump in and start That's voting. Right. We'll see if those numbers change. Hey, you might need a ride to the Coliseum. Uh, the public shuttle bus is getting fans to and from the Coliseum. This starts tomorrow, by the way. Shuttle is operating from the entry F of the Sheridan uh, Greensboro at Four Seasons, and that goes to the ACC Hall of Champions over at the Coliseum. It's only $5 a person round trip, and you can see the schedule right there on your screen. Make sure you check out and maybe take a, take a little screenshot of that right now. We're coming back in just a few minutes. You know, most restaurants, they'll boast the best this or the best that, but there's one restaurant in Greensboro who truly has the best steak and the best meat that you can buy anywhere in the U.S. I got a chance to see this firsthand. Welcome to Cal. So when I come in here, my number one draw are just meats, whether it's at the butchery or a dish. I mean, that is one of the biggest things you do, Kane. Tell me about that. Yeah, so, I mean, we're an all-encompassing restaurant. Uh, but the cornerstone of this concept is the butchery. And here at Cow, we grind, stuff, chop, cure, and smoke everything in house. And we use only prime beef. So there's a huge example. I mean, example look at that, man. Yeah. Well, how big is that? So that's a 32 ounce cowboy ribeye. Cut in house, bone in. And all the, so all the stuff, the meats you're bringing in the best, right? Mm -hmm. You're cutting them all here. Yep. I even heard somebody downstairs told me you even brine your own pickles. Yep, yep. We, we, we try to do everything in house. So, yeah, brining pickles, like I said, cutting, grinding, stuffing, smoking, curing. So, somebody can come in here and not necessarily, you don't have to sit at the restaurant. You can go to the butchery and get the meats to go and That's take right. them home and do it, right? Hey, we'll cook it for you, or you take it home and cook it yourself. That's perfect. Specialty cuts, house cuts, whatever you want. So, anything unusual besides just the normal 
chops and that type um, of thing. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll go game. You know, really? we got elk, antelope. Oh, yeah. yeah, our sausages. We'll make a swamp sausage made out of gator and crawfish. Really, oh, I did yeah. not know that. What we're doing is we're trying to reintroduce simplicity, but also have some fun on that. You know, bringing back the old meat and two. Yeah, that's perfect. Right? And we all were brought up on that, right? So you got to check out cow. Oh, that looks good. I'm telling you. Uh, that place, and uh, so he explained to me that the USDA does prime, and then I always get these two mixed up, so I may be wrong on this, but prime, choice, and select, I mm. think. But I know prime is the top. And he said everything they buy is all prime. And he said you will find, and he wouldn't drop any names, but he said in some upper end restaurants all across the country, even big chains that are known to be a little fancy, mm -hmm. uh, he said they don't buy prime. So when the guy that sold mm. the meat to him said, you sure you want to buy prime? He goes, I want the best, and I'll just, we'll make less money, but I want the best. Mm. Last time we went there, you bought from the butcher, too. Yes. I remember we all had lunch, and you went home That's awesome. Stuff. All right, coming up after the break, what turned out to be a hot topic on my Facebook page, do you take your shoes off when you get in the house? And do you think it's rude to ask your guests to leave them at the door? Answer this question. Join our live stream. We're on the WFMY News 2 Facebook page. Let us know what you think about all this. I'll explain why I'm asking, and we'll take a look at your <laughs> comments after the get break. Get shoes off. Welcome back to the Fortify. I have a question for everyone. What do you do with your shoes when you go inside of a house? So if it's me going in the house, I ask them if they want me to take my shoes off because at our house, we usually, we, we don't make it a point, but we, if they'll ask. Most guests will say, do you okay. want me to do it? We say yes. No options at our house. It's you shoes have to all take them off. off. So because we have hardwood and then it's a point where it hits carpet and yeah. once you hit the carpet, Shoes, shoes off. off. And shoes like, off. it's a line of shoes around there. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, I'm asking because 
I'm a little over concerned perhaps <laughs> about people wearing their shoes inside <laughs> of my apartment. Here's a photo. Shoes are out the door. Why? Because it's nasty to wear them inside. A study by the University of Arizona found the average shoe is covered with 421,000 oh, bacteria. And listen to this. 90% of those bacteria tend to transfer directly onto a clean tile floor on first contact. First contact. <laughs> Now, I take my shoes off always in my house and in other people's houses, but I always feel like I'm being rude if I ask someone else to take their shoes off, especially if I don't know that person really well. Now, if it's a friend, I know them really well. In that case, they probably just know me enough to know yes. that I want the shoes at the door. But I asked you on Facebook, and I got an array of responses here, Jalen. They're fiery. Feisty. <laughs> the first comment comes from Tony. He says, if you feel that strongly, then take them off. I will not, however. That's why it's called house cleaning and carpet cleaning. Your house, your rules, which I disagree with. It's playing out rude. Darlene says, I hate going barefoot, but if shoes are wet, muddy, grassy, I will take them off at the door, but slippers go on immediately. Scott says, I think it's totally up to the homeowner and what they are comfortable with. As far as for me, that's what the doormat is for. If, they, if you wipe off your feet, then I'm totally fine with them leaving their shoes on. And our last comment comes from Brooke. It says, I helped teach a couple of microbiology classes and when I needed a good contaminated and nasty sample, I swabbed the bottom of my shoes. Disgusting. That and I so rest nice. my case. That's, there Thank you, Brooke. That is what I'm talking about. I never thought about it that much until my wife brought it up to me one day and she said think about everything you step on in a parking lot and what's you know was food and nastiness and the more i thought about it the more i think that's on the carpet and i'm like a get down on the floor kind of guy with the yeah. kids and watch oh, tv yeah. and stuff think about what you're in you can't do that but i understand and a couple of people pointed this out on my facebook page they said you know maddie you live alone so it's harder when you have a big family that's there true. and that's you true. have you know people coming in and out especially kids who are just running in from the outside so yeah i, I feel like i'm i've got it easy right now i can tell you it changes things <laughs> when they come in <laughs> What are sure. you thinking, Jalen? And Tamika says she has a great aunt that told her to take the shoes off, and the kids didn't listen. And she made all of her great aunt made all of them clean the floor with a right. toothbrush. Oh. A toothbrush, <laughs> a toothbrush. <laughs> really? Unbelievable. Okay, right, I, think, I don't go that far. And if I'm having a lot of people over, I'll just clean after, right? Yeah, That'd be the enough. last time they do that, though. Promise you that. Uh, let's see what's going on with the forecast, and uh, we've got a chance of showers slipping in. 20% chance for Wednesday. We've got a 30% Thursday. Friday, it's up to 40%, and we stay warm. In fact, Friday, we might see a 70 for a high temperature. Look for upper 60s tomorrow and the day after. Heading into the weekend, though, we get a little bit cooler. Uh, you notice that uh, chance of showers there hangs with us. It's not huge, but a 20 to 30 percent Saturday, Sunday, 56 and 52. By Monday, 54, and you're heading into St. Patty's Day there with 65 degrees and only a 20 percent chance of a shower. Hey, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together.
Right now, we have supplies to test 300 more people. We have the criteria of that you um, had traveled to a high-risk um, area, that you had a known contact with someone who was positive, and also that you had a respiratory illness um, that was severe enough to be hospitalized. Um, that was the criteria we are using, um, but we have opened up that even um, more. And you're hearing from state health officials and Governor Roy Cooper about the coronavirus in North Carolina. Governor Cooper declared a state of emergency. There are five new cases in Wake County this week. That brings our state's total to seven. Those new cases are connected to people who went to a conference in Boston. They are all quarantined in their homes. Those new cases, however, are not linked to the first two cases. The one in Chatham County, that person who recently went to Italy, and the other patient who traveled to a retirement home in Washington state. So I want to explain what a state of emergency is and what it's not. It means state funds will be moved faster to help local agencies who are working to stop the spread of coronavirus and the price gouging law is now in effect. State officials are also suggesting anyone older than 65 to avoid large gatherings. A state of emergency, however, is not a reason to panic. We are so glad you're joining us this Tuesday afternoon. Welcome to the four to five. I'm Maddie Gardner here with Eric Chilton. Yep, we're here to make you feel connected. That's what this show is. As we like to say, it's always a two way street and we are right here on our Facebook feed. WFMY News 2's Facebook feed. Jump in, chat with us a little bit and uh, who knows, we may talk about what you're saying on the air here. That's exactly right. Make sure you are using our hashtag. It is four to five. Really simple. It's also at the bottom of your screen. Very good. All right, let's get some news here. The American Red Cross is asking healthy individuals to donate blood. They need this. It will help prevent a blood supply supply shortage during the virus outbreak. Cold and flu season also impacts national blood supply every year. The organization also suggests for blood drive hosts to continue hosting those drives. Well, the coronavirus, of course, is consuming the headlines. Experts are worried that it might be causing more panic than needed. Remember, the flu has killed 34 million people in the United States so far this season alone. There are only 25 deaths in our country from the coronavirus. We turn to the experts here to give us the facts, not to spread fear. I don't think it's going away anytime soon. And it's a scary thing because it's not something that we can track on a radar map. Um, it's not something we can see or smell. It just feels like it's everywhere. You know, anxiety is something that can definitely be felt and observed. And so kids are gonna pick up on that. So if we can model just safety and prevention, then they're going to feel, they're gonna feel safer. I think that this particular crisis feels both um, global and national in scale, but there's also a hyper-local focus to it in the sense that everyone's tracking the maps. It feels personal to everyone, um, which does make it uh, have that, again, that element of, of large-scale fear. Kids, more than anything, they just want to hear that they're going to be okay. You know, they just want to be that, they, they, they need to be reassured and they want that reassurance. So more than anything as a parent, just coming to them, um, seeing what they know, seeing if they have concerns or questions, um, helping them fill in those blanks. reminding each other that that's, uh, that's part of what living life means, is recognizing that there are risks, but we are in this together. Yeah, and I've heard a lot of people who think that just reporting things about the coronavirus might spread more panic, but I do think truly that it's important to educate yourself and know the yeah. facts, which is what we're reporting here, so you can put that into perspective. I'll bet you there are people that have already had coronavirus and got over it and didn't even know it and hmm. thought they might have had the flu. I, and I also had a question that I just thought of it while Maddie and I were sitting here during that story, and I said, after if you get it, are you l less likely to get it again? Can your body build up immunity to this or is it something that you can get over and over? We'll have to look into that one. All right, in the meantime, let's get you caught up on some more news this Tuesday afternoon. Family members gathered today to remember the people who died in a Boeing 737 MAX crash in Ethiopia. Today marks one year since 157 people were killed in that crash. An interim report said that software built to stop aerodynamic stall was active four times during the flight. Since that crash, Boeing 737 MAX jets have not flown. And a big announcement from the Carroll Companies. They're rebranding their new hotel in downtown Greensboro. It will now be an AC by Marriott Hotel. 
You might remember that space was initially an Aloft hotel. The new AC hotel will have more than 130 rooms, meeting areas and a bar. And the new hotel will be 12 stories tall instead of the six floors they planned for Aloft. Greensboro's 100 Males Mentoring Program is halfway to achieving a goal. City Manager David Parrish said the program needs at least 40 more male mentors to pay with, pair with young men. 100 Males Mentoring wants to improve the lives of local young men impacted by violent crimes. So if you want to get involved, you can find this story on our website. High Point police are still searching for the dad of an 18 year old that was killed in a car crash Sunday morning. Roderick White faces multiple charges, including second degree murder. Police say White was under the influence uh, over driving over 100 miles an hour on East Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. He hit several trees and a fence. The car then stopped in the grass and caught fire. Several other passengers were ejected and injured. White left the scene before police arrived. If you have any information, call High Point Crime Stoppers. And caught pink. Handed. Two women are wanted for stealing from Victoria's Secret. The women reportedly stole $700 worth of pink brand clothing from the Friendly Center location. If you have any information about this, call Crime Stoppers. All right, let's talk about a forecast and see what's happening here. Uh, we've got some changes coming up with temperatures and they're going to be pretty quick too. And in the short term, we're good. In fact, we may hit 70 on Friday. That's kind of a highlight right there, but upper 60s for Wednesday, Thursday. The rain chance is pretty stubborn. Not that we're going to see heavy rains, but those chances not going away anytime soon, even though it's slight. Tomorrow, 20%. It's a 30% for Thursday. Friday is kind of the bullseye for the rain. That's a 40%, but mainly dry tomorrow. One thing to note, the morning temperature tomorrow around 50 52 degrees, so very mild. Then once we get to Friday and that front actually moves by, we'll take those rain chances down but not out. It's only a 20 to 30 percent chance for your weekend, and you notice the temperatures are getting cooler as well as we go 56 on your Saturday, 52 on Sunday. Heading into Monday and Tuesday, uh, different two days there, 54 on Monday with a 30 percent chance of a shower, but by Tuesday at St. Patty's Day, we're up to 65 degrees. Pretty comfortable on that day. Keep your eye out in Greensboro, you might see uh, film cameras. There's an independent film in the making in the Gate City. Cornelius Moeller Productions is making a movie called Making Him Famous. Burgess Jinkson is Jenkins, excuse me, is the founder of Winston Salem's Actors Group, and he's co-directing and acting in the new film. It's co-produced by White Orange Productions in Greensboro, and most of the filming will happen at their studio. It begins on Thursday. All right, what do herbal products like melatonin, a natural product, or a dietary supplement like hydroxycut have in common? Well, they are not regulated by the FDA, but that does not mean that we don't use them. It does mean that they are not tested by the government to be proven safe or effective, but I'm guessing we use them. I use we? melatonin. I use, I use melatonin it too. For daylight saving time. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And we think, okay, how can it hurt? It's something that's natural, right? But again, it's not regulated by the FDA, hmm. and a lot of people think that it is. A lot of folks like to use essential oils as well. Anybody use those in your household? I have household? not done that. I haven't used them, no. Okay, so I have lots of friends who use essential oils, and we're not here to debate whether or not they work or not, but I am here to see if you're getting what you pay for. Look at this right here. We're putting essential oils under the microscope. Three oils at three price points, focusing on one of the most popular kinds, which is lavender. So the lowest price point when they tested this back in February was from Amazon at $8.99. Then there was one for $26 and then one for $63. Of those three oils, two of them were lavender. And the other? We call that adulteration. So this should be labeled lavender. It could be potentially harmful. Right, so it's not Ooh, lavender. Wow. It means that it could make your skin itch. Oh, because it's not the real careful thing. Right. Okay. So we're revealing the testing tonight on Two Wants to Know to kind of let you know, hey, which ones did what and why, and why you really do need to be careful about what's in those bottles. Okay. Let's talk shopping, friends. That's right. Do you make a list when you go shopping? I do because I will forget something. Groceries, okay. yes, not anything. Not okay, is this things. a mental list or is this a I write no. it down yeah, list? I have to write it down. Phone. Okay. Yeah, on the phone. All right, so we're talking with a behavioral economist, and yes, that's a thing. 
It talks about how we shop and how we like think about it. we shop, right? Okay. Um, and they say if you make a physical list instead of just a mental list, you will make less impulse buys. So we're going to talk about that. She's going to explain why that is. It's a personal contract with yourself. It's a personal contract like with that. yourself. There's that. Okay. And my iPhone. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dania. <laughs> Or would you travel to see your team play? One family is coming from pretty far. I catch up with them and why they're here coming up next. All right, time for the question of the day. Get out your phone. Go to WFMY News 2's app and uh, vote here. Men's ACC tournament, of course, kicking off in just a matter of a few minutes. Or has it? It's already kicked off. <laughs> it's, it's already it's going. About right 13 now. minutes underway. That's, that's so we right. want to know what North Carolina team you are rooting for this year. NC State. Duke, UNC, or Wake Forest. By the way, if you don't have our app, which you should, yes. but if you don't, you can go to WFMI.com slash vote now. In the meantime, WFMI News 2's Amanda Ferguson. She's the lucky gal. She's out at the tournament. Yeah, Wake Forest and Pitt are currently in action right now, currently in the first half, and that's why we can't be around the arena right now. So we're over at FanFest, which starts tomorrow, but I've been at the Coliseum for a few hours now. I talked to a bunch of fans before they came inside, some coming from really far away just to see some of our North Carolina teams. In fact, a trip to the ACC tournament is a dream come true for a mom and a daughter. It was actually a Christmas gift. Tammy McCartney surprised her mom, Patty, with tickets to the entire ACC tournament. They're coming all the way from Oklahoma, so they say it's not easy to take off work and travel here. Tammy will be cheer cheering on the Blue Devils. She went to Wake, or she went to Duke. Meantime, her mom is a huge fan of the ACC, has been for about 30 years now, and this is her first time at a tournament, so you can imagine her excitement on Christmas morning. I opened a box and it had a Duke shirt in it and then the seating of Greensboro and it said your seats are here. And this has been my bucket list. I always wanted to go to the ACC tournament just because I love, I'm from Pittsburgh, so Pitt's in it, Notre Dame, Duke, everybody that I love is in it. Well, Pitt is playing right now, but the Blue Devils, 
they don't play today. They play in a couple of days, but it's a lot of bonding time between these two right now, right inside that Coliseum. Yeah, that's the great thing about the ACC tournament. It's fun to watch even if you're not there for your team. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And, and you know, there are people that just go and watch the whole tournament that don't even have a, you know, a dog in the hunt, as we like to yeah. say. They just go and have fun. Let's take a look at these results right now on our free news tube app. 43% of you are saying UNC. That's who you're rooting for. Followed closely by Duke at 32% and then NC State at 20%. Wake Forest still with 5% of the vote. We're waiting, Demon Deacons. Yeah. Get in there. All right, uh, so nothing brightens a kid's day like a mascot from their favorite team. But what happens when you bring almost every mascot from one conference into one gym with a group of exceptional students? You get a room full of happiness. Take a look. You might know this one. A lot of your parents know this one. It's Ramses from North Carolina. 13 of the ACC mascots are going to be here playing an exhibition game against our students. When the mascots come walking in, you can scan the room and see all of the different faces light up. And one kid is going to react differently to every single mascot. So when you have 13 mascots rolling through the door and you're getting multiple reactions, then the whole room lights up. It means everything. I mean, this is ACC land. So for us to have the mascots here at Herbin Metz Education Center, where we're just this little unknown school that serves students with special needs. It, it's everything um, to our staff and our students. And to be able to come to an elementary school, especially one that is such a special part of the Guilford County community, it's really neat. Our kids have never been in an environment like this. These students have never been a part of something like this for our mascots. So it's a win for everybody. That was so much fun up there. The, the staff was just as excited. In fact, the, the principal said at one point, because I think the staff's more excited than the students are to have the mascots in. They had every team. In fact, somebody um, was asking me there, where's so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. Some mascots weren't there. Georgia Tech is not in the tournament mm -hmm. this year, so Buzz wasn't there. But get this, the Clemson Tiger couldn't yeah. be there today because um, he had a photo shoot in LA oh. and was flying back on the plane. Is that oh. what it is? Yeah, Jalen said it was probably because of the national champion thing. Maybe. So, of course, the mascot, and Eric, you'll know this because you were the uh, mascot yeah. at UNC. They traveled with the cheer team. They were on the spirit squad, so I was on the cheer team at UNC. And they, it's always so much fun to just interact with them when they're in character, and you saw them all interacting with each other. It's kind of like a skit that they put it on, is. right? They're like actors in there. It's cute that um, they will not break character. No. Like, they will they not talk. talk to you through the mask or anything. They will not do that. Uh, of course, the Notre Dame mascot can talk yeah. to you. You know, I think Ramsey is my favorite, but the Syracuse Army. Orange. So What's funny. his name? Oh, why did you ask? Sorry, me? but he Look, gets what is it? Otto. Otto. That's Otto, right. That's exactly. Thank you, Jalen. He gets yeah. down in his little ball and yeah. he spins around <laughs> like this. It's the cutest thing. Second you know what? Who else is funny? The Stanford tree. That, that always cracks oh, yeah. me up. Yep. Very funny. <laughs> All right, we're coming right back. Let us know what your favorite mascot is right here on Facebook. We'll talk about it.
Hi there, one, two, three, four, five. My equipment is about to fall, so stand by. Earlier in the show, I showed you the top grade meats at Cal Restaurant. By the way, that's K-A-U Restaurant in Greensboro. But it's not all about steak there, too. The seafood lover has some options as well. Take a look at their specialty. It's a tuna poke bowl. All right, we're at Cal Restaurant Butcher Bar. In case you haven't been here, you got to be here. Kane would agree with me because he owns the place. How are you? Doing great. Doing so great. Talk about the concept real quick, and then we'll feature our... Yeah, yeah. It's a concept that's been in my head since I was 15 years old. I spent a lot of time in Detroit, Michigan, and uh, we'd go to uh, neighborhood markets where inevitably they would have a, a, a butchery, a little marketplace, and a cafe, and I was always intrigued by it. And I said, one day, I want to do that. And here we are. We have a full working butchery, a little market, and a full service restaurant. And so, so the dish that we were looking at, and we'll show you what this is like when you make it, but what is this? Yeah, so th this is our tuna poke bowl. So we, we bring in fresh tuna, we bring in the whole loin, we cut it in our butchery, we sear it off with sesame seeds, and then we uh, create this poke bowl which is a, uh, you know, first time I tried a poke bowl was in Hawaii. And cow is actually Hawaiian for bowl. My wife and I went there for our honeymoon and that's the first time I ever tried a poke bowl and I said, I'm bringing that back with me. And so here it is. So we got rice, we've got tuna, a little seaweed salad, carrots, uh, radish, avocado. I mean, it's just a, it's a fresh, light bowl. And you know, when people come in here, one of the things, I mean, the, the historical aspect of the building, just a few seconds left, but I want you to tell, tell us about, this is a bold looking place. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very unique. It used to be the carpentry shop for the mill. Um, when I was designing it, I left it alone. You can't recreate history. We're just trying to uh, bring it back to life. It's very cool. We love what you've done here, man. Well, I appreciate Thanks it. for letting us invade yes, for sir. a little bit. You're, you. you're not gonna throw this away, are you? No, have it for lunch. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I just realized now that, not that I've just realized, but I'll reiterate the fact that I eat my way through this show. Oh yeah, every, everyone every comments. Day. Why does Eric Julie's laughing at me get to do all the food stories? <laughs> I think that would be so fascinating to own restaurants and to be a chef and to travel and then think, I'm gonna bring this yes. back somewhere when he said he went to Hawaii. And because that's not, you know, you've been there before and Cal that's not their normal fare. So he said he wanted to do something a little different. They really experiment and play around. Hmm. It's cool. Delicious. It's very nice. Hmm. Check it out. Um, and look for that story, by the way, on our website because I'll have the information there for you how you can get in touch with them. Let's look at the forecast for today and see what's going on. Most of the current temperatures are in the mid to upper 60s, but the seven day shows that for tomorrow and the day after. Rain chances 20, 30, and 40 percent for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Still warm, warm but cooler this weekend. We're coming back.
Hey, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together like a... Hello, yes, the Stanford tree is pretty dumb. Otto the orange is excellent.